My name is Dakota Pike, and you're listening to the Better Ideas Podcast. You ever wake up and just feel like you just start doing stuff and you just feel great for the rest of the day? Like you just feel so accomplished. That's how I'm feeling today. It feels good. And I guess that kind of pertains to what we're talking about today or what I'm talking about today. Today's a solo episode. I'm really excited about it um, because it's something that's really close to home with me. But before we get to it, I got some housekeeping to do. Um, I cleaned the studio today. By studio, I mean my spare bedroom in my duplex that I use as a podcast studio and I write music and it's it's kind of my man cave. It's pretty sweet. Uh, yeah, rearranged it, got a new couch for it, kind of a love seat, saved some space and uh, just been rearranging and cleaning and it's just such a good feeling. It's kind of that that concept of as above, so below or you know like if you if you clean your room, it actually does something to you that just makes you feel good. Like you, you just you clean something within you by by cleaning your the space that you live. It's it's kind of an amazing concept. Jordan Peterson talks about it all the time, but I fully believe it. It's awesome. So feeling good. I got a clean studio. I got a lot of cool things in the works and um, just a lot of cool stuff going on tonight. So if you're hearing this, uh, it will have already happened, but um, tonight I'm leading a minimalist meetup in Lawrence at JNS Coffee. So that goes on once a month. So if you guys are at all interested in this idea of minimalism or um, shedding the superfluous and living an intentional life, if that's something that piques your interest, then shoot me a message and I'll get you the details on when these meetups happen and uh, how you can get involved with it. Uh, we do them once a month and I lead it. We usually just pick a topic. Uh, to be honest, this is only my second month, so I'm not really, I'm still kind of getting in the groove of knowing what exactly to do because I wasn't really planning on leading this. It just kind of sort of happened, and I'm honored to be able to. So if you guys are at all interested, just let me know. We meet once a month at a coffee shop and just hang out with like-minded people and have really cool conversation. Last year, when the band was the number one priority in my life, I went through Facebook on the suggested friends list, and I would add pretty much anyone that had a instrument in their profile picture. This kind of made sense at the time. I didn't know what would happen, and uh, what happened was I got put into some weird algorithm or something. I'm assuming I was just showing up on everyone else's suggested friends list because I got obscene amounts of friend requests for like weeks like hundreds a day it was it was ridiculous I still haven't sifted through all of them because I'm not even sure a lot of them are real people so I wouldn't recommend doing that but every now and then you'll discover somebody on Facebook that you don't know but they're on your friends list that happens to be a really cool person and that's what happened with this uh next week I'm going to be talking to a guy named Kyle Devlin who is a athletic trainer he plays guitar in a punk band and I believe has a t-shirt company. So he's got a lot of cool stuff going on and he posts these um, short little snippets of inspiration on a daily basis. I, I, I'm assuming the guy reads a lot or something, but he's always got something profound to say and I love it. Um, they're always really motivational and encouraging and they just make you want to get up and move and work out. And so I reached out to him, and we've been trying to get this set up for a while. Scheduling's been a little bit tricky, but we're going to make it happen. And I'm really excited about this conversation just because the topic hits home with me. Exercise and fitness and this idea of the correlation between mind and body. Um, 
I went through somewhat of a weird experience a few weeks ago that I felt was worth writing about and uh, definitely talking about. So I'm going to read you guys a short essay that I wrote. It's more of a journal entry than anything because I was really just writing to myself. So just know that anything I say in this is... Uh, it's more of a mirror. I'm saying it to myself, but I thought that other people might might get a little bit of uh, meaning out of it, so it was worth reading. So here it is. This is Mind and Body, The Process of Progress. A few months ago, I sustained the weirdest injury of my life. I coughed and pulled an abdominal muscle on my lower right side. At least I'm pretty sure that's what happened. This sounds like the lamest and most insignificant thing to write about or even admit for that matter, but it threw me for a loop. At the time that this happened, I had been practicing yoga, but hadn't actually worked out in over six months at least. A few weeks prior, while stretching, the cartilage connecting my ribs popped out of place and sort of freaked me out. This had happened before, so I brushed it off and didn't think about it until the day I pulled a muscle in the same area. That day, I had my first panic attack. This still doesn't sound like a legitimate reason to have a panic attack, considering other situations I've been in. The difference here is that I always knew that hitting a rock at 20 miles per hour or eating it down a set of stairs was going to hurt and possibly break things, but I had no idea how this happened or even what happened. I felt a pop and couldn't rationalize any sort of cause. A week later, I realized that the injury was more mental than physical. The second panic attack was a giveaway. I was cooking dinner with my girlfriend, trying not to think about my side, when I started to think something was seriously wrong. I had become hyper aware of every little thing that felt off and couldn't stop thinking about it. My ears started ringing, I got lightheaded, and then I felt familiarity. This was the same exact thing. I sat down, took some deep breaths, and I worked my way out of it. This might be the time that most people would go see a doctor. Maybe that would have been a good idea, but I didn't want to pay somebody to tell me that I need anti-anxiety medication and that there's nothing physically wrong with me other than a pulled muscle, so I decided to do something about it. I've worked out in the past, but always for the wrong reasons. I wanted to get buff, or at least look good. I didn't eat right or hold myself accountable. Now I have different reasons to train. I believe that humans can do incredible things with their mind and body, so why not heal myself? It's what we're designed to do. Part of what taught me this is that I've been eating a low-carb and sometimes ketogenic diet for well over six months and have felt amazing changes to both mind and body. The thing that I haven't been so good at is building strength, mobility, and overall health, which is why I'm starting with the basics, calisthenics. In starting calisthenics training combined with yoga, I have realized that exercise is just as much a mental game as it is physical. It has helped me differentiate the mind, heart, and body in a new way. You can live in those spaces differently, and you can allow those spaces to communicate if you're being mindful of them. Before, I wasn't listening to my body. I was constantly thinking about my injury, working myself into panic, and convincing myself that there was more of a problem than there actually was. I started out with a little bit of rehabilitation and progressed into some light body weight movements. Within a few weeks, I had conquered the mental aspect of my problem. I was able to get through an entire workout without any real pain, even though I had convinced myself that I was constantly in pain. Exercise forced me to pay attention to what was actually happening. It allowed me to move from my headspace to my body, so I listened. I've been exercising for about a month and have already felt a huge change. This month, I have started a six-month calisthenics training plan, and this is my way of holding myself accountable. The fact that my body is weak enough for a cough to cause an injury and that my mind is weak enough to allow that to cause major anxiety is going to change. My goal is no longer to get buff. I want to be strong, healthy, and feel great. Aesthetics are a byproduct. I've chosen calisthenics because it's a style that I've never tried that has been around forever, so I'll be less likely to get burned out. It allows me to turn exercise into more than just numbers and reps. 
Calisthenics athletes are known for doing horizontal pull-ups, handstand push-ups, crazy ring movements, and things of that nature. As someone who loves skateboarding, I see these movements as tricks to progress toward. You have to learn to ollie before you try to smith grind down a handrail. In other words, I need to build up a ton of strength and skill before even attempting the more extreme movements, and that's what attracts me to the most fundamental style of training. Through all of this, I've learned that beauty and strength are in the process of progress. We hold an idea in our heads of that person we want to be or the person that we aren't yet. It's easy to get caught up on that idea and punish ourselves for not living up to our own expectations. Sometimes just that is enough to keep us in a state of complacency and self-loathing. We convince ourselves of our greatest fears. Sometimes we believe what our left brain tries to rationalize and live in fear, not trying to do anything about it. But that's the game. If you don't do anything about it, you aren't playing to win. You aren't even playing. We're here to conquer our fears, to grow, to learn, and teach others to do what we have accomplished so far. I see no reason to continue living in fear considering I've lived through every scary thing that has ever happened to me, and so have you. So there it is. That was my essay slash journal entry, I guess you could call it. I'm not really sure. But sometimes for me, it just helps to process things on paper or out loud. And when I'm unable to, um, when I'm unable to rationalize it or to, to figure out what's going on out loud, then just writing, it just helps. So if you guys are going through something, I would, I would recommend writing about it. It really helped me. And um, I think that it helps anyone to sort of create a create a narrative for your life. Um, most of how humans learn is through story, and it seems like that's usually what sticks. So if you give yourself a story or you give yourself that narrative to live by, then then sometimes it becomes more real and and applicable. So yeah, it was it was a strange experience and I'm I'm still somewhat dealing with it but it's getting a lot better with this practice in mind it, I just I know that I have a goal and I have something to work toward instead of sitting and dwelling on what I think might be wrong and it, it's really helped tremendously and uh, to get into the calisthenics idea a little bit more I learned about calisthenics from my friend Will who you guys have heard on this show a bunch of times uh, he just randomly told me to look it up, and I did, and I kind of became obsessed with it. Calisthenics is a, a Greek root word, kali and sthenics, meaning strength and beauty. It's it's like the oldest form of, of exercise, and uh, it stood the test of time. And the best part is I'm not going to pay for a gym membership for this whole thing. Um, I mean, I don't discourage going to the gym, but... I don't always have time for it, so having all the stuff that I need at home kind of gets rid of the excuse not to go to the gym. So that's what I'm going to be doing, and if you guys are interested in that, then let's keep in touch and let's continue to talk about it as a network because I need you guys to hold me accountable, um, and everything that I've said that I'm going to do on this podcast, I've done. And I think that's part of the reason that I want to, to talk about this so bad is because I know that if I say it and I put it out there, then I have to do it. So it's not really just me at this point. You guys are involved. So, um, yeah, I hope, to, I hope you like the essay. I, I might do more stuff like that. I wrote one on minimalism a long time ago, and I never did anything with it. And I'd like to start doing stuff with some of that writing. Um but yeah, when I was when I was going through all of this, I just I did a lot of research. And first it started out just researching what the heck happened and my conclusion is that it most likely was just a pulled muscle. Um, but I had a hernia when I was a little kid, so the thought of that I think might have actually been what caused the panic attacks. I had never had a panic attack, but I've had two or three now and I I am I'm sorry for anybody who deals with that on a daily basis just because it's so overwhelming and there's nothing that really anyone can do to help in that moment other than you, other than the person having the panic attack. It's, it's up to you, but even that's not possible sometimes. And anxiety is, is real. 
And uh, I've been skeptical in the past about what that is or what that means because I, I didn't relate to it and I couldn't really understand it. But I think that I am starting to, to understand it on a, a whole new level. And I really, really empathize with anybody who goes through that. Um, but in my studying and in this, this you know, DIY internet research, uh, I found all kinds of useful information pertaining to yoga, breath work, exercise, and all of these ways to counter depression and anxiety and stress and uh, just bad health in general with, uh, with the physical body, this idea of moving and actually taking action instead of taking medicine. Not that there's anything wrong with SSRIs or antidepressants or anything like that, but I would just argue that there might be a lot of other ways that are just as helpful to counter these things that you're going through and that I've been through. Um, exercise literally rewires your brain. There's a, there's a I'm, I'm not sure what it's called, uh, what the proper term for it, but it's called the amygdala, which is a, sort of a fear receptor in your brain. And whenever it is uh, lit up or whatever, it, it releases fear hormones and it puts you in that fight or flight mode. And the more out of shape you are, the, the more likely it is to be triggered because your body has to get the strength to be able to fight or flight. But if you exercise on a daily basis, then you already have the strength to get out of whatever situation you're in, and your brain is less likely to convince you that you're in some sort of danger. Um, I think for me, a lot of this, a lot of the cause of this was cognitive dissonance, which is makes me feel like a hypocrite because I always, you know, point out how our whole nation is dealing with this cognitive dissonance and how everybody has it. Uh, and I'm just as much guilty of that as anyone else. Cognitive dissonance is this idea that you believe something or you know something, uh, something that you should be doing or something that's true and you don't, um, and you just kind of live with that and that eats at you. And I believe that that is one of the fundamental causes of anxiety, just when you're, when you're not being completely honest with yourself and, where that came into play for me was the fact that I have been eating a, a great diet. I've been doing yoga and I've been practicing a lot of minimalist concepts into my life. And I've been getting a lot of things in my life in order while in the back of my mind, always knowing that exercise is extremely important and something that I should be doing, but I hadn't, I, I guess convinced myself that yoga was enough, but, um, even, I'm not even, I wasn't even extremely disciplined about that. So all this is to say, I am going to stick with it. And I would like you guys to hold me accountable. And I hope that this episode just brings some sort of encouragement. If you guys have been through something like this, I'd like to hear about it. Um, I don't think that anyone should go through this. If you think about the way that humans have lived for most of our evolution, for hundreds of thousands of years, um, we had to move. We were forced to move. Hunter-gatherers, we had predators. We had things that, that made those fear receptors in our brain functional in the way that they're supposed to be functioning. But now our lives are, I don't want to say easy, because we just have different stresses. We have different fears. We're not feared... We're not, we're not afraid of getting eaten by a tiger, but we're afraid of paying our bills on time. And that's a whole different type of stress that if your physical body isn't engaged, it, it, it just throws things off and there's an, there's an imbalance there. So I guess what I'm realizing through all of this is that everything has to do with everything. Uh, everything with your body is related to your mind. I mean, they just figured out within the past 10 years that your gut and your gut biome is basically like a, a, another brain in your body, and it has a nerve that sends, uh, I believe, serotonin to your brain so that your diet has a lot to do with your mood. The, how much you move has a lot to do with your mood. It's not all in your head, and I'm realizing that firsthand that I'm, I'm learning the benefits of of applying that concept and that idea. 
I think that a great way to end this episode would be to give you guys some tools to get started on something like this because I highly recommend it. I, I'm My testimony is, is solid in terms of how exercise can affect your life and, and change things. And it's never too late. I, that's such a, such a terrible misconception is that people who think that they're out of shape, it's it, that exercise isn't going to benefit them because they're never going to reach their goal or they're never going to look the way that they really want to look. But I would just say that you need to change your perspective a little bit. It's not about aesthetics. It's not about looking the way that you want to look. It's about feeling the way that you want to feel. And that's way more important. And looks are a byproduct. You'll, you'll get there, but you'll start feeling the benefits way before you ever look the way that you want to look. I don't look exactly how I want to look, but I feel way better than I did a month ago. And that's incredible to me. And I, I feel like I have more energy and stamina and my, my mind is clearer. And I don't know if that's a placebo or if that's something I've convinced myself. But according to a lot of the latest science, I, I think that it's, it's valid. And I, I, do, I do feel a significant change. So uh, w- one of the tools that I recently discovered that is just awesome is Align Podcast. This guy named uh, Austin Alexander, I believe is his name. He does a podcast where he talks to other like fitness people, like fitness coaches and dietitians and nutritionists and all kinds of really intelligent people on just optimizing your life and your body and your mind and, and everything. Uh, I learned about him from the Aubrey Marcus podcast, which is another great, just phenomenal. I mean, he's like one of the kings. He's up there with Joe Rogan. But Aubrey owns the On It Academy, which is a human optimization academy that specializes in everything from uh, MMA training to shamanic breathing. They have something for everybody there. They also have all kinds of supplements and things like that. But if you listen to the podcast, it's just a great way to learn about some of the things like I listened to one on uh, gut microbiome a while ago, Uh, kettlebell training, shamanic breathing was a great episode with Anahata, his instructor. Um, yeah, there's some great, great tools on both of those podcasts. If you're more of a visual learner, I know I am, especially when it comes to working out, uh, a great channel that I found was the Calisthenics Movement. These guys just have the most perfect form. I don't know if I will ever be able to achieve some of the stuff that I see them do, but they have great beginner programs that that help you get from a point to where you may not even be able to do one push-up and you'll be doing horizontal pull-ups within less than a year. So they've got some pretty incredible stuff. Another great one is Thenx, T-H-E-N-X. They're a YouTube channel. They're a bit more of a brand. They're a little flashy. Uh, I really like the brand, but they, they have less useful information than the calisthenics movement, but... Uh, what they do have is is awesome, and they have a lot of uh, beginner type programs, and then like intermediate and even advanced stuff. But they, uh, yeah, they they specialize in chin up bar and uh, rings and all kinds of crazy stuff. So calisthenics, Denex, all of those guys are doing great work. Aubrey Marcus, Austin Alexander with the Align Podcast. Um, what's another great one? Dr. Rhonda Patrick. That would be a great one for anybody, just anybody in general should look up who Rhonda Patrick is. Uh, I believe she's a nutritional scientist, I think is the right word for it, but she changed my whole perspective on health and just what works and what doesn't, um, because it's not really a blanket statement. It it varies from person to person, and uh, all we know is that a low-carb diet seems to be the best for most people, but she can bring a lot of nuance to that, even that conversation. So I highly recommend that. Uh, there's Chris Kesser. There's um, Gary Tabas would be a great one. Actually, here's another great one just for the diet aspect. Gary Tabas did a documentary. It's on Netflix. It's called Sugar Coated. Everyone should watch that because it kind of blows this this 
whole food pyramid conspiracy just just blows it away. I mean, our food pyramid is upside down. The American Health Association is so backwards when it comes to telling us what is healthy and what isn't. They would put a stamp on a giant bottle of Welch's grape juice and tell you that it's healthy. In fact, they do. And that's equivalent to drinking a soda. I mean, it's the same amount of sugar and your body treats it the same way. So I wouldn't recommend that for anybody. But yeah, I'll quit rambling, but I just thought I'd leave you guys with some tools to uh, gain some of the same information that I have and that I've benefited from. And yeah, just um, I hope you guys enjoy this. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Better Ideas Podcast. Uh, if you found some value and you'd like to get in touch, then just go to patreon.com slash better ideas. There you can find everything that I've ever uploaded and you can choose to contribute to the show monetarily if you feel like it. If not, then just give me a follow on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, or go to iTunes and give it a five-star rating and leave a review. Uh, I haven't got too many of those yet, so that would be really awesome if you guys wanted to leave some encouraging words there. If not, then just keep listening and I will talk to you guys soon. Yeah.